Welcome to Talks on Web. Today I'm going to show you an amazing application, Wox. It's going to allow you to move your way around Windows in a much more sleek and fun way. It's kind of like Alfred from Mac, but this one's for Windows. So let's see what it does. I'm going to look inside my bookmarks for a bookmark I saved called Canada. And this shows me the current time it is in Canada. I'm going to go back into my bookmarks and look for another one, which I saved called HTTP status code. Look at how smooth this is. I didn't have to use my mouse or anything. Next, I'm going to go inside my downloads folder and look for, let's go inside of the software folder as well and look for an exe file that I had downloaded. See how smooth this is? Next, let's open up an application, let's say Notepad, right? And I can open up any other application inside of Windows through this process. See how smooth and fun this is? I know what some of you are thinking, you can go to start and do the same thing. I find this to be more fun, looks kind of cool too. Next, I'm going to search for inside of Google for the keyword Laravel. It opens up the tab for me, does the search, and shows me the search results. How cool is that? Next, let's do a Google Lucky search. So Google Lucky, I'm going to give the search term. It's going to find the first search result and open that tab for me. See, it kind of does the dumb work for me. So it's like having an assistant with you. Next, let's do a YouTube search for Talks on Web. Amazing channel, by the way. Subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. I'm going to switch windows from an editor to a notepad to back to Chrome. And I'm doing all of this. So if you have 20, 30 windows open for whatever reason, you can easily navigate your way around. It's a fun tool. So let's get to installing it and move forward with it. Click on download, download the application. It's an exe file. Once you're done and you double click on it and you can get to installing it just like any other windows application. Next, when you go to your icon tray, when you're done installing it, you'll see Vox. right click on this and go to settings. And before you do anything else, first thing you have to go to hotkey. Now control space is what I press to have that search bar show up like this. You can find any keys you want to just make sure it doesn't interfere with Windows Windows shortcut keys. So click here, press the keys you want for that search bar to show up. And you're pretty much ready to go. All right, and having said that, I'm going to move on to the next part, click on plugin. And here's a browser's bookmark. Now, when you click on that hyperlink B, you can find any letter you want. I like the letter B. When I press that, the bookmark shows up. You can find any other letter you want. Next, let's go to folders. And when I type in folders, this is what I mean. I can do FL and go to the most recent folders that I want. Folders that I go to most often. Next, when I click on this, I can define, I use FL as in folders. You can define any other letter or letters you want. Do the one, this is about customization at this point. When you click on add, you can define the folders you go to most often. And those are the folders that are going to be listed in the background. So when you type FL, you see all the folders that you can quickly jump to those folders that you want. These are the ones I go to most often. Next, I'm going to scroll down and move to, let's see, programs. Now, C program files is where 95% of your programs are going to be, like Notepad and anything else. In the event you have some programs which are installed outside of that folder, which is 5%, very small number, you can then add those folders in and say, okay, these are where the exe, you know, the program executable files are. Go and look for it there. Next, I'm going to scroll down and move to URL. Okay. So again, click on the link and change it for any other letter you want. But for me, I type, I press the letter U. You and then the URL I want to go to. So if there's a specific URL in my mind, I type it in, it opens it up for me. Convenient stuff. Next, I'm going to move on to web searches. This is where I was doing all the fun stuff like Google searches, YouTube searches, Google Lucky. This is where it's done. You define the letter you want to be run, to use to run this specific URL. In this case, it's a, U a Google search. So now let's take a look at it. This is a URL Google search uses. This is the curly braces Q is where my search term is going to go, right? And then I use the letter G to run this specific URL. So I'm going to put this stuff in the description, but for now, let's test this stuff out. When I type G, and again, you can change the letter, I give them the search term, and that specific search term is used to run that Google search. Next, you got to look at this. The curly braces Q is where your search term is going. And that's how it's really functioning. So it's just a URL with curly braces Q where the search term is going to go. Next, I'm trying to learn a new language called, you know, French. So I'm using Google Translate for that. This is their URL, Google Translate. 
And where my actual search term is going to go is where is the curly braces Q is. So let's try it out. I'm using TR, the letter translate. It kind of makes sense to me. So TR, my name is. And when I hit enter, it should open that tab. Take me to Google Translate, put that in, and then show me the translation for it, which is mon nome, or je m'appelle, which I want is good. French is not easy, folks. All right, so GL. Google Lucky, you open this up. This is the URL they use. Again, I'll put the stuff in the description in case you need it. And this is the URL they use. And the curly braces queue is where my search term is going to go. So that's where that is. And I'm using GL, the letters. You can use any of the letters you want. Go for the stuff that's easy for you, convenient for you. I'm going to hit cancel. And this part, I'm going to do GL testing out. You know what? Let's do Laravel instead. Okay. Open this up. And... There it is. Again, it's doing all the dummy work for you. Now, YouTube, this is a fun one. For YouTube, uh, I'm going to edit this. And the letter Y is what I'm using. Y for YouTube. This is the URL YouTube uses. The curly braces Q is where they put their search results. I'll put this in the description so you can copy and paste it. And this is how this part works. So when I do Y, Talks on Web, great channel, by the way. Subscribe button is itching for it to be smacked. I'm going to move on and it just opens it up for me. You can see my search term is in the URL exactly where the curly braces Q was and it's doing all the dummy work for me. All these other links that you see down below, this is stuff I added to customize and make my life convenient. You should add stuff that makes your life convenient. Moving forward, I'm going to go to this one, Switcheroo. Now, this is not installed by default. You have to install it yourself by clicking on this link, find more plugins. And it will take you here. Now, if you're on walk stop one, if you look up, you can click on plugins. It will take you to the same location. These are plugins that you can add in aside from the default one. So let's click on this one, YouTube query. If you install this, it will allow you to search YouTube. And, you know, it's just an installation that takes you there. That's what they're saying. So if you copy this, open your search bar and install it. Don't install it yet. But this is how you would install it. Okay. Now, when you scroll down, it's important to scroll down, look at the comments, because here are people who installed it and said it doesn't work. So it's important to look at those and say, OK, is it worth the while or is it not? These guys are really helping out as well. So I'm going to go back and the application, we, the plugin we really want to install is Switcheroo. So it should be right there. Again, if you don't find it, you can easily use the search bar, type in Switcheroo and boom, right there. Click on it. And again, it's telling you how to install it and what it does as well in animated GIF. It allows you to find the window. So you can go to the taskbar, open up the windows, or you can go through it this way. I find this to be much more cooler, much more slick, all that stuff. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to open up my search bar, paste it in there, and boom, you hit enter, and it's going to start installing itself. Pretty cool, right? I'm going to move back to the settings and click on switcheroo. Make sure it is enabled. Make sure this is not clicked and then define the letter you want for it. I use F as in find kind of fun. So that's what I use. Next, uh, there's this tab right here option. Use all tab to bring up the option to switch windows with this. I don't use it because when I hit, hit all tab, it allows me to switch to the most recent window and it's kind of better. I mean, test it out, enable it, see how it works for you. Next, I go to system commands. Now in this one, you can actually shut down your computer, restart your computer, log off, lock this computer, a lot of other stuff. There's a whole list of these things here. Now, one thing that is good is you can go to bookmarks. Like when you add your bookmarks, it won't show you the most recent bookmark you just added. You have to restart walks to do that. So this is where the system commands really come in handy. You have to restart. You can use that to restart walks. Like I'm going to do SC restart, not computer, but walks. Because if I just added a bookmark in, I have to restart the stuff in order for it to take effect, pick up on the new bookmark I have. Having said that, I'm going to wait for this thing to kick in. And it should kick in by now. So this is these are all the features that it provides. Hopefully this was fun. Let me know in the comments if you find this to be as useful as Alfred for Mac or you just like it as, as a general tool. Hit that subscribe button.